747-8F is a, a pilot's delight. All of the pilots love flying it. It's the biggest freighter in the world, and it seems likely that it will remain that way for the foreseeable future. The 747 is the ideal aircraft to become a freighter because the cockpit is on a separate upper deck, the little bubble above the main deck, which means that the nose door can be opened and cargo loaded straight onto the main deck. Other aircraft, even the double-decker A380, have the cockpit in the way. You couldn't open a nose door because the cockpit's right there. This is really important for large freight, particularly long objects. There's obviously a limit to the size of the object that you can load onto the aircraft through a side cargo door. The 747-8 can carry about 20 tonnes more freight than a 747-400 freighter over the same distance, or it can carry the same weight over about a thousand miles further. The nose door and the side doors do have wind limits. To operate them, the wind must be less than 40 knots, and once they're open, the wind must remain less than 65 knots. So you should never open the door if you think the wind is going to get above 65 knots in a typhoon or hurricane. Although GSS only operates three 747-8F aircraft for British Airways World Cargo, we cover a fairly extensive route network. We fly to Chicago, Houston and Atlanta in North America. We fly to Frankfurt, Cologne and Madrid in Europe, as well as London and Stansted. And we fly to many places in the Middle East, India and as far east as Hong Kong and Shanghai in China. We also fly to Johannesburg and Nairobi in Africa. I think the main differences between cargo and passenger flying is you don't get the frustrating delays because there's a passenger still in duty free or in the bar and you don't get all the complaints from passengers and you don't carry any cabin crew so you have to cook your own meals and uh, make your own tea which is fine it's, it's actually nice to, to have a break and, and get up and do that on the other hand you tend to get more delays for cargo because if there's a, a pallet with 10 tons of cargo that hasn't arrived at the airport yet you wait for it whereas if half a dozen passengers don't turn up you go without them a Boeing 747 passenger aircraft including the Boeing 747-8i which is the passenger version can be turned around in as little as one hour if everything works to plan. But cargo aircraft take a lot longer. As you can see from pictures of the inside of the main deck, it's vast. It takes two to two and a half hours to unload a fully laden freighter and reload it. You're moving about 135 tonnes of freight off the aircraft and then replacing it with another 135 tonnes, which has to be lifted up to a height of 17 feet to go through the cargo doors. We do handle dangerous cargo. We probably prefer to call it hazardous materials, hazmat for short. Carriage of hazardous material is tightly controlled and there are very strict rules about what type of material can be carried, where on the aircraft it can be carried and what other material can be in the same hold, just in case there could be any cross-contamination. This is all listed on a form called a NOTOC, which is short for Notice to Captain. So on every flight, including passenger flights, there is a NOTOC given to the captain, signed by the person that was responsible for loading the material, and signed by the captain to say that he accepts that it's been safely loaded. On a freighter aircraft such as this, we carry cargo which is designated CAO, cargo aircraft only, and that has to be carried on the main deck, and we go down and inspect that before we take off. Keeping the aircraft in balance is not just important, it's actually absolutely vital to the safety of the aircraft. So each cargo aircraft has a, a loadmaster who is in charge of loading the aircraft and placing various pallets in the correct position. So he has a big chart on which he enters the weight of each pallet and from that calculates where the centre of gravity is and adjusts the centre of gravity to be in the ideal position by moving the pallets around.
The most interesting or surprising cargo that I've carried myself was 69 prime breeding pigs that I flew from the UK to South Korea, which were then used to crossbreed with Korean pigs to produce the best pork. In global supply systems, I think our biggest load was a wind turbine tower. I think this one was about 40 meters long, it was huge. So it had to go through the nose door. The 747-400 has winglets, little bits that stick up at the ends of the wings, whereas the Dash 8 has raked wingtips. They both achieve the same thing, which is to reduce drag by altering the way that the wingtip vortices occur. Wingtip vortices are caused by the high pressure air underneath the wing spilling over the end of the wing into the low pressure air above the wing, and that's wasted energy. And the winglets or raked wingtips achieve the same aim but through different means. So it depends on the length of the flight that you're going to do. On a long flight, rate wingtips are better. So aircraft such as the Boeing 777 or the 747-8, which tend to do long flights, have raked wingtips.